Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to our Thursday night service here at the Hebrews Baptist Church. What an honor, what a blessing it is to be able to present the Word of God to you, to myself also, uh, tonight. And for me, this is a very special message. Uh, it's something that the Lord has been working and doing in my life specifically for a few years now. Uh, and listening to Pastor James's message, he often reminds me of this thing uh, that the Lord has been doing in my life, helping me to go backwards uh, instead of forward into thinking that um, you know, because I'm the pastor of the Hebrews Baptist Church that that really means anything. I, I, it does in one sense in the church is that, you know, there has to be a head in every place that we, you know, that has an organization. But other than that, I'm you and you're me and we're all together. Our fellowship is a bunch of fellows, ladies are included in on that, uh, in the same ship. And uh, God has no favorites, even though sometimes we think we are, or maybe others think they are, but we're all just sojourners. We're all just pilgrims. Uh, on our journey to the celestial city, uh, as John Bunyan wrote about. So we're going to be over in Psalm 143, and we're going to see about a man who, um, King David, who is at the top of his game. He's king of Israel. Um, in those things before becoming king, you know, he killed bears and lions I think it doesn't say singular. I think it was, I think it talks about plural. Uh, now that must be quite a feat. Uh, we also know him as a great warrior. Uh, David is considered to be Israel's most favorite king. Um, he did, you know, the works that he did, uh, the good works, because we also, the Lord allows us to see the negative side of him, even though he is still called to be a man after God's own heart. Uh, the lions, the bears, of course, we're all familiar with the famous story of how, what a great, you know, giant slayer that he was. But also uh, his relationship with, with Saul's, King Saul's son, Jonathan, a very, very unique uh, relationship. They had such a deep, deep heart, uh, this man had. He, his character, in fact, he's probably, he and Moses and Paul maybe. Uh, are some of the most written about characters other than Jesus uh, in Scripture. We've got so much that we can learn from these people. That's why I always say, you know, a lot of people, they want to study psychology and read Genesis. If you want to know the ins and outs of, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly of human beings, we'll find that clearly written throughout the lives of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, and Jacob's evil sons. Uh, and everything that they did. But God's got a plan for everything. And I thought we'd just go through Psalm 143. Uh, somehow in the last few weeks, uh, this psalm has been recommended, or hinted. Uh, somebody may have sent me uh, a link. It may have been in one of the, I get people to send me things. Thank you so much. Streams. I can't remember where, but so I'm reading it. And the Lord's really talking to my heart. Uh, about me uh, and how important it is for me. I, I'm losing sight, brothers and sisters. Um, my wife is sick in the hospital, uh, and we we still don't. Uh, my feet are still planted in midair. I'm hoping the next day or two, uh, I'm supposed to get some information and some guidance somewhere. I, we've just been floating around, um, just trying to get a handle. On things so I can get her home. And uh, and I've really been um, pressed out of myself. And I've lost it. I, I, I admit, you know, my faith has been challenged to a to a point where I've been failing. I've texted a couple of people here and there. I'm um, just letting them know what, what's going on in my life. And and because I, I found out that my faith wasn't as strong as I thought it was. But this sound really helped me. Uh, and I know it'll be a blessing to you too. So I'm not, I'm not just preaching from that, from Psalm 143 uh, for you or, or me, but for us. It's very unique. So we're going to start in verse one. David writes, uh, and I'm sorry, 
this is uh, this is about Absalom, David's son. You read about that over in Second Samuel, um, somewhere around chapter thirteen. It goes for a few chapters uh, about a son that David loved deeply, uh, but yet through a series of events, uh, Tamar was raped, and, and Absalom. It took a little bit of time, but he and some of his friends got together. Oh, who was the guy? And killed, um, oh, I can't pull his name right now. Uh, and that caused, because of the law, because, you know, it was wrong to do that, uh, that David, um, Absalom had to leave Jerusalem uh, and really hurt David's heart. Uh, he, like I said, cared deeply for his son. But then through, this, through a series of events, uh, Aslan was allowed back uh, and to me it was unclear uh, that he really should have been but of course you know when it comes to these deep feelings and, and things that are very very important in our lives sometimes they cloud the issue of right and wrong um, and even on a smaller level things that we like that maybe the Lord wants us to give up again you know the devil's always kicking up the devil and the demons are kicking up a lot of dust to try and cloud the issue so we don't see clearly or we get a little distracted from the truth of God's word. It's, very, it's so easy. You know, all of us are affected by these things. Uh, but Absalom, now, after David allowed him back into Jerusalem, um, didn't like the way David was running things. And so he started uh, some sedition. Uh, very, very craftily, very cleverly, very subtly, uh, Absalom started to get talk to people uh, against his father, who again deeply loved him. Uh, and David was learning about these things, but he just, I guess, he just thought that it wasn't going to go anywhere until one day David woke up and found out that Absalom had a lot of friends that were now David's enemies. So much so uh, that David was going to flee Jerusalem. Wow, he's king. And and he's got a tremendous amount of people. Um, Joab's his general, you know, just an honorable guy uh, you know, as, as people go. Um, and so this is all the setup of, of what happened here. So when David, again, woke up one day and realized that he was in trouble, he did something that we all need to do now uh, in our lives. We'll start out in verse one. David starts to pray and he says, hear my prayer, O Lord. He says, give ear to my supplications and, well, actually he says, give prayer, give ear to my supplications. And then you notice a colon there. In thy faithfulness, answer me. And in thy righteousness. So in, in so David's going before God, and he's not saying, hey, God, look, you know, you made me king. I've done all this. I've done this, that, and the other thing. I, I've been faithful. I've been a good king. And, and he has been in many, many things. He didn't come before God, straighten his halo, uh, and telling God, you know, hey, I'm not that bad. You know, we've done a lot of things together, God. You know, we, we, you know, David had, you know, a lot of blood on his hands. One thing about David as a warrior, when, when God would direct him to do something, nothing got in David's way. <laughs> he just killed everybody. Uh, and uh, in fact, so much so that when the temple of David uh, was then going to be set up to be built, the, te the, uh, the temple, uh, David, God told David, nope. And he said, your son Solomon's going to have to do that because you've got too much blood on your hands. And it would just, it, in a sense, it would have given God a black eye. I think that's how I look at it. You know, and God just wasn't ready to, uh, you know, have all of David's blood put on God. Uh, so Solomon had to build the temple. It's a big backstory. Um, but David recognizes here where his bread is buttered. It's not buttered because he's he'd reached a pinnacle in his life. Because you and I haven't. He, you know, David isn't going before God because he's all that in a bag of chips, which unfortunately a lot of us as Christians believe we are. Uh, and it doesn't take long 
to find out uh, about these things in our lives or seeing them in other people's lives. A lot of Christians are, are advertising signs. They're billboards. Look at me. Look at me. Look at how much I know. Look at what God's doing in my life. Look what time I get up to be with God. And God doesn't care anything about that stuff. And if he does, he most certainly doesn't want us to know about what 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 God is doing in other people's lives from that standpoint. And testimonies, and yes, but not to brag about, oh, look how close I am to God. Because truth be told, none of us are. Truth be told. So David says, Lord, give ear to, he, this word supplication is, have favor on me. Lord, I, Lord, I need a favor. You got a favor in your back pocket? He says, so give ear. I, I need a favor, Lord. Because you're faithful and because you're righteous. Not because David had achieved more than anybody else at that time, probably, uh, had done in their life, equal, equal to Moses. And But he recognized where his help was going to come from. And it wasn't David and God. It was God. And in our walk now as New Testament believers, our walk isn't Jesus and me. It's a great song. Okay. I get, I understand the song, but it, it's Christ alone because all of our, the reason David's asking for God when he says, uh, you know, give ear to my supplications and my prayer because you're faithful and because you're righteous, because we are not faithful and righteous until we're born again and our lives have been then, then then dedicated to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because then 1 Corinthians tells us that when we become born again, he makes us to be justified. He makes us to be righteous. He makes us to be faithful. Now, we then build upon those things. Those are gifts uh, that we are blessed with. We didn't earn them. Um, there was nothing that, you know, we just had to have those things and they come in this new life that we have with Christ. But verse two, again, this just keeps going on, showing us about how and how David recognized that everything in his life was about God and not him and God. God put him in that position. God called him as, as the youngest son. Nobody, remember when, when uh, Samuel came uh, to, uh, who was it, Jesse, was it? Uh, and said, hey, you know, uh, I need to talk to your sons. And they all, well, here I, here I come. How many people do we know like that? How many people do we know like that? Yeah, look at me. Hey, I, you know, and here's David just doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's watching his father's flock. And nobody thought that <laughs> David, you know, and he was the one chosen. Because he never felt he was going to be anything. He was just trying to be faithful. There's a lot behind that. Just more backstories. So in verse 2, David writes, again, bringing this into context, he says, give ear to my prayer, to my supplications, because God, not because of me, because you're faithful and you're righteous. And look what he writes here. He says, and enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. And again, this is reiterated over in 1 Corinthians, a couple other places in Scripture, that no flesh is going to justify itself in the sight of God. We know that all, all of our righteousness, you know, if we were to put all the righteousness, and we probably have, you know, a smack roll here, or, you know, a tiny bit over here. If we were to put all of our righteousness together of everybody that's that's in this service right now, we couldn't, we couldn't blow our nose out of a paper bag. We have none. The only righteousness we really have today has come from Christ. If it wasn't for us being born again, we wouldn't have any righteousness in our lives. And David knew that because of God's faithfulness, not because David was king, not because David was the head honcho, not because David was a man that did all these wonderful things. That stuff didn't mean anything. David recognized and realized that the only reason he could do all those things is because the Lord was with him all that time and that God does these things in our lives. You know, David walked around like we should with an attitude of when there is good coming out of our lives, when there is righteousness coming out of our lives, when, when we're doing 
the right thing. Well, you know, I do the right thing, you know, because I go to church. You should. You're required. First Corinthians chapter four, or what is it? Verse two. It's required of a steward that we be that we be found faithful. See, we want the gold star. Look at me, God. Look at me, God. I do this. I do that. I do the other thing. And truth be told, we can only do those things because we're born again. And then we're taking glory to ourselves. Well, look at me. I cast these demons out of Shut up. Be quiet already. Quit advertising yourself. Quit thinking that you're something when, what does the scripture say? Why do we think we're something when we're nothing? See, we need to grow backwards. We need to die to ourselves. We need to let, let God work in our lives. Let God be God and let us be who we really are. Nothing, nobody's from nowhere. Embracing that first beatitude. What's wrong with us? We read these things. These things scream out at us. Listen, so many times to me, again, I mentioned, I love Pastor James's simplicity of Christ because how many times has he, has, and I would hear him, you know, I would hear it in the message and it would just, it would just echo, it would just grab me when he would say that, God, listen, God's not, you know, God's not answering our prayers because we're anything. God's answering our prayers because he's faithful. Because he's righteous. Because God makes us promises. And we just take those promises. We say, no, God, I, I, I don't believe you're going to do that, so let me help you. God doesn't want our help. He wants our faithfulness. He wants our obedience, period. Listen, he's given us a new life. I'm not cold-hearted. I, I get it. Listen, I know that there are, there are many here who have gone through worse things than I did. You know, my, I mean, my little run of drugs and... And all I got saved early. I got saved at the age of 22. So thank you, Lord. You know, and I went through a whole bunch of stuff, you know, the law and jail and, you know, court marshals and, you know, but I know there's others here that have gone through a heck of a lot more than I have, but Jesus has given you a new life. And he's told you, he's told me how to deal with these old things. We just keep carrying this big sack of garbage back into our lives of what we were, but we're not that anymore. We're more than that. Why can't we let that go? Well, because we've got demons, but why do we have demons? Why can't we, because coming into agreement, we're gonna see this here, but coming into agreement, we've got a lot of familiar spirits in our lives. We, we've got demons that we like. We just don't realize it. We've got demons that bring us comfort. They bring us comfort through our pets. They bring us comfort through TV shows. They bring us comfort through secular books, maybe, that we might read or sec something secular. So, and, and when I mean something secular, I'm talking about that Christian garbage that's on YouTube and everybody else's blog and bloom and, and booger and everything else out there that may be good, but we don't know that. So many of these things are distractions. We're forever learning, but never being able to come to the knowledge of the truth of what Jesus Christ is wanting to do in our life today. He's given us a loaf of daily bread, and we're out grabbing everybody else's bread, trying to find out where we're supposed to go. Why can't we grow where we're planted? Well, because I want to do this, and I want to do that. Well, then go ahead. Go ahead. Enjoy your bad self. You do all those things, but you're never going to grow in the Lord. You're just never going to grow in the Lord. Oh, you're going to grow in your own head. You're going to be a legend in your own head. And if the head could, if it could physically expand as far as it is spiritually, you couldn't get through a door. You couldn't get through a 40-inch door. David had the key here. He says, David says, I deserve judgment, but he's king. He says, he says, I'm wrong because David knows who he is. David knows his faults. He knows his failures. He's trying to, and he truly is in many ways a very humble man. He says, enter not into judgment with me, Lord. For in your sight, I recognize that nobody, me, you, or anybody else, no matter what, no matter how much good we do, or we think we do, how many demons we cast out, and oh, I've done this and I've done that, that doesn't mean anything with God when we steal the glory from the Lord. So he says in verse three, he says, for the enemy, Lord, has persecuted my soul, just like he does every day with us. We Listen, we've got too many pet demons in our lives, truth be told. 
But these things want to run to rip our soul apart. They want to rip the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, and the way we react. And listen, brothers and sisters, I know that very clearly now because of this challenge that I've had since my wife's been sick. I, I have been just pushed beyond. I, I wrote somebody the other day, I said, I'd rather go through Marine Corps boot camp again than to go through what I have in the last three weeks. Well, three weeks, the last year. I mean, I, I would just, this has been, this has been a nightmare for me and I have failed and failed. Thank you for your prayers. I'm so embarrassed. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed. Well, I am embarrassed to admit it, but you know, I, I want you all to know that I'm no different. You know, I, I have feelings and, you know, I battle things just like everybody else. I have failed my wife. I have failed. She says I'm fine, you know, but I know, I know I, 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 and I still need help, but I'm getting it. I'm getting, I'm recognizing, I'm coming for the Lord and I'm repenting and I'm, I'm, I'm doing self-deliverance, you know, and all this stuff is helping. That's not what this message is about, but uh, so moving on. So David says, for the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground and he's made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. He's made me, these demons. That, now, this is Absalom and, and the conspiracy. But remember, these physical enemies in the Old Testament are our spiritual enemies today. There's a spirit of Absalom, okay? It's a conspirator. You know, it, it's uh, it's all part of, of um, oh, Korah and that whole group back with Moses' day saying, hey, Moses, you know, who do you think you are? And, and hey, listen, that's between, that's between you and the Lord. I don't care what people say. Listen, I'm trying to be faithful in the position that the Lord put me in. And I I am I have failed miserably in doing that. I'm sure I've done some good things, okay? But I know who I am. And I'm, I'm embarrassed by the mistakes and, and, you know, and all these things. But it's a position that the Lord has put me in. And you can like it or not like it. Because I don't like it sometimes. You know, I'm a good pew sitter. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the future brings. Uh, of course, I've been saying that. I've saved in 79, so well, I guess we'll see what tomorrow brings. Uh, but David writes, he says, my enemy makes me feel like I'm dead. Is there anybody out there that feels like they're dead sometimes? Come on, just own it. You know, you just feel like nothing's working. Nothing's helping. I wake up with this, that, and the other thing. I go to sleep with this, that, and the other thing. I've got, I've got all these issues. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, God has an answer. He wants us out of the way. You know, you know what I came to realize in this thing with my wife? Because I have worked my backside off. I, I am stretched. I hurt. My muscles, I, I, I'm not going to in, go into long details here. You know, I, I am hurting. And I'm not complaining. Please, please, I, I'm not complaining. I, I'm I truly am grateful to the Lord that I can still help, you know, that I can still be there. But it, it's just it's been a real, real battle until the Lord just showed me. And he and I've read this and I've taught this, but I, I got to the end of myself and I realized that I had no more. I couldn't do anymore. And this is why I was struggling. You know, with with taking care of my wife because I, I couldn't do anymore. I was maxed out. I, I was off the cliff. I, I didn't have one foot on one foot on the banana peel and the other foot out the door. I was already out the door. And you know, and the Lord showed me that, and he, I was in a real real bad situation before, and I did everything I could. And when I finally just screamed to the Lord, I looked up to him and I screamed to the Lord, I said, Lord, I can't do it anymore. And the Lord said, well, son, I've been waiting for you to get out of the way. Yeah. Apparently I didn't learn that lesson. So now I'm trying to learn because I can't do anymore. You know, I, I'm no match uh, for this enemy. So he says, the enemy has pers been persecuting me. I feel I'm smitten down to the ground. I feel like I'm long dead, Lord. And in your faithfulness and your righteousness, Lord, help me. Don't help me because I'm king. Don't help me because you've made me this. And look at, woo -hoo, look at what a good 
brother or son I've been. But because you're good, Father, because you're good, God, because you're good, Savior, because you're good, Holy Spirit. Therefore, he says, my spirit overwhelmed within me. All these things, these problems, these enemies, which you and I still have in many, many different aspects of our lives, uh, is telling us, David says, therefore is my spirit, my life is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. He says, I'm empty. I, I, I can't do anymore. I've been, I've been trumped. But I remember, Lord, brothers and sisters, do we? He says, I remember the days of old. And that might be yesterday. I meditate on all thy works. Did you, did you ever through, go through those times when you're, on, when you're on the mountaintop? And I mean, everything's just perfect. You're reading, you're studying, you're, you're absorbing. Woohoo, you know, not even a mosquito would come near you. You know, we've all had those days. He said, I remember those days, Lord. I meditated on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hands, Lord. All I could ever do was think about you. I stretched forth my hands on you. My soul th was thirsting after you as a thirsty glass. See, while you are, we. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like them that go down into the pit. David knew what was going on here. David knew that this enemy was going on between Absalom and Absalom's friends were far more than David was going to be able to take care of. And brothers and sisters, these demons, we have authority over them, but we've got too many agreements with them. We've got way, these things have way too much access to our lives. Truth be told. And before David woke up and realized that Absalom had a lot of people that are following him now in, instead of King David, by the time we wake up a lot of times, and I've had this happen to me. I won't go into details now because we don't have the time, but this has happened to me. I can tell you two or three very specific times in the details, you know, about how I woke up and I'm like, wow, Lord, what am I going to do? But I, and I realize, see, I'm, just, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about this right now. Two or three times, at least, I've woken up and I'm like, I mean, I, I'm crying. Saying, Lord, I screwed up. What, what am I going to do? Because I knew the enemies that I had around me were very strong. You know, you know I wouldn't, you know, I would never know. And, and the Lord Hold my chestnuts out of the fire, as they say. I hope that, I hope, I hope that was okay to say. Let me move on before I get in trouble here. Hear me speedily, O Lord, because my spirit faileth. And when our spirit fails, brothers and sisters, we're done. And it's not that we die. But we just feel, like he said, I feel like I've been long dead. He said, hide not your face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down to the pit. And now look what he does. He does what you and I need to start doing in our lives, even when we don't think our enemy is that big in our lives. David says, cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. Father, in Jesus' name, for every single one of us, brothers and sisters, if you're doing dishes, you're vacuuming, uh, you're doing something else, cutting the grass, why don't you just stop for a second? Because this is very, very important. David said, look, so Father, in Jesus' name, cause us all here right now to hear your loving kindness in the morning and right now, Father. For in thee do I trust. That's one of the inroads that these demons have in our lives. And that is that we don't trust the Lord like we, it, we may be in our head, trust the Lord, but in our heart. And again, I just discovered this again in my life. In my head, I can tell you all the good stuff. But sometimes in my heart, I was failing. And he says here, cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. 
for in thee do I trust. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But the fear of the Lord is a huge, huge deal. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we want the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, as, as Paul prays over in First Corinthians, over Ephesians chapter 1. We want that in our lives. But, Father, it all starts with us fearing you. It all comes with realizing, Father, that you are God and we are nothing. And it's not you and me, God. It's you. We are not, you know, God is my co-pilot. Father, we need you to be the pilot. And we we all need to be in the trunk or the back seat. Or just following you, listening to you, wanting to do what you want us to do. Every day, Lord, you give us a loaf of daily bread. Every day, your will wants to guide us, but we don't listen because we got too many other things going on. We got we got the social media just telling us, do this, do that. Look at this, study this, study this. Lord, help us to grow where you planted us. Father, deliver us, heal us from the vagabond spirits. Father, in Jesus' name, come out of us right now. Every spirit of that, every spirit of wandering, Bible to Bible, relationship, relationship, blog to blog, video to video, come out of us right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of every spirit of the vagabond, come out of us right now in Jesus' name. Lord, cause us all to hear your loving kindness, because in you, Lord, we do want to trust. Lord, cause us to know the way wherein I should walk. What a great prayer, brothers, sisters. We should do this every day. So right now, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, cause us. See, David knew. David knew his weakness. David knew who God was and, and who he wasn't. And he's saying, Lord, I can't do this. Cause me to do it. What a great prayer. I'm going to have to go here in just a minute. Huh? There's something important going on. But nothing more important than me finishing this. So, David says, Ca cause me to know the way that you want us to walk. Not the person next to you, not the person in front of you, behind you, not the blog, not the YouTube, not the fa your face and everybody else's face, but where God wants you to walk. Where does God want you to walk? You can keep calling, and I'm not going to answer. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I am lifting up my soul to you. Let the Lord know what's going on in your life. Not as a, just let the Lord know what's going on in your life. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. Father, what, excuse me one minute. No. Cause me, um, deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. We can't hide ourselves anymore. We couldn't hide ourselves to begin with. So he says, deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. Father, in Jesus' name, deliver us all from my enemies. Teach me, Lord, to do thy will. For you are my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Father, in Jesus' name, teach us to do your will. He has to teach us. We're never going to follow our way because you and I, we want the easy way out. Well, we quote the scriptures. We justify. We talk, 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 talk. But we don't do, 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 do. Ask those around you. Ask your wife if you're married. Your spirit is good. You're, we're letting God know that, God, you're it. it it's not me and you, because we're no good. He says, lead me in the way of uprights, up, uprightness. Father, in Jesus' name, quicken us, O Lord, for your name's sake. Not, not so we can be better, not so we can speak better and let people know what great Christians we are, because we're not. Truth be told, we're not. We stink. All of our righteousness stinks truth be told quicken me O lord for thy name's sake for thy righteousness sake bring my soul out of trouble 
Woohoo! God wants to deliver our souls. He wants to restore our souls. And of thy mercy, his mercy, remember, judgment, getting what we deserve. We don't want that. Grace, not getting what we deserve, no. We like that grace. But you know what mercy is? So remember, judgment, getting what we deserve. Grace, not getting what we deserve. Mercy is getting what we don't deserve. God loves us so much in these filthy vessels. You know, the problem is, and how can a demon be in our life? How can God stand to live in a vessel that is so dirty? That's the truth. He says, and of thy mercy, cut off my enemies. God's mercy for us. Ask for God's mercy. I do. Cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul because I'm your servant. I'm not co-equal with Jesus. It's not me and Jesus that we sing the song, you know, the two of us. It's Christ and Christ alone. And we're never going to go anywhere until we get deliverance from these demons that push us out there to be something. Why can't we just grow? Let the, let the Lord put us in where he wants us to be. And I have to run, but what a blessing, what an honor. I'm, I, I, I'm so sorry I've missed the services, and I just, I'm just, I'm in a rock, between a rock and a hard place, but the Lord, Lord made this way open for me to visit with you. I hope to be with you Sunday, because I, I really, I want to, I've got a beautiful message that's going to put across all the T's, dots, all the I's, dot, all the I's in a, in a, in a Sunday service about why we can't lose our salvation. I'm chomping at the bit, but we'll just see how the Lord does that. So, hey, I love you all. Listen, reread this yourself. Ask the Lord to enlighten this. Dude, this is such a great song. I've read it three or four times now because it's what I need. And I bet you need it too. So I love you all, and Lord willing, here, there, or in the air, as I always say.